You're listening to Sorry for Asking. Sorry for Asking. I'm Cole Connor. And I'm Adam Ramsey. This is where we talk shop, ask questions, tell stories, and laugh some laughs about being creators, as well as consumers of adult content we love watching too. We certainly do. We also discuss the impact adult films have had on us, on our guests, and on the LGBTQ community. So strap on and strap in. And here we go. Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome back to Sorry for Asking. I'm Cole Connor. I'm Adam Ramsey. Hi, Cole. Hi. How you doing? Oh my God. Good. Good. Yeah. Welcome to episode three of season three. We are balls deep into March 2024. <laughs> this year is flying by. I, I was just saying that how like January felt like it was 100 years long, and I feel like now we're just like, boom, 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 no, things yeah. are happening. February always... I mean, it's a short month, so... Yes, I guess that's what it is. is. Yes, right. <laughs> Obviously, folks, we're taping this in February, but don't worry about it. Hope you're enjoying your March in the, in the, at the moment. <laughs> um, we have today a very special guest. I'm very, very excited to introduce to you... I mean, he needs no introduction. He's an absolute superstar. The stunning and studly Chirac. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome. How's it going? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, tell, um, us, tell us. Tell us. Uh, tell us about your day. First of all, how's it going? How are you? I'm good. I, I just said before we started, I'm tired, and it's it's like 2 p.m. I shouldn't be tired. <laughs> but I'm still. I, I just got back from Europe. I was there for a long time, and I'm. I think I'm still jet lagged. So uh, I'm yeah. waking up like super early. Oh, jet okay. Lag, jet lag takes like a day for each hour time zone. Oh really? really? To like adjust. That, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'm on the tail end of it, but I'm still waking up like at five a.m. Mm. So. Oh man. I'm tired. But I'm good. Um, I feel like good. you go to Europe a lot. Is this is uh, yeah, this correct? Yeah, I go to Europe a lot. Where did you go this time? I like it. I went to Paris. Uh, I felt. Bring this closer a little bring bit, it closer. so I can hear. Okay. I want to hear that beautiful, <laughs> sexy <went> voice. To, <laughs> I went you. to Paris again. Okay. Um, it's been like three years. I just keep, I go a few times a year. I really fell in love with Paris and specifically Paris. You go a few times a year, specifically Paris. Yeah. I have a lot of friends out there and it's do just you, do you like, film a lot there when you're, um, I, I do this trip. I, I did like, I think four scenes. There's some, there's some guys in Paris that I've seen on Twitter that yeah, I would be like, Oh yeah, I'd hit that. There's some really beautiful <laughs> men out there. I mean the men in Paris and Europe, but Paris in particular for me, they're beautiful. Yeah. What speaks to you about the men in Paris? Um, the men, in, and I don't want to say there aren't beautiful men all over Europe, but like, of course, the, the men in Paris. There's a lot of diversity in okay. Paris, and I really enjoy that. Parlez-vous français? No. Oh. <laughs> and you get a, and you I get away with it. I can fake it. Okay. Okay. I can fake it. I know. I know enough to. They learn. just want you to try. They just want you to be like, uh, merci. Uh, they're like. What do you need? <laughs> <laughs> you know, people say you can't get, you can't get by in Paris without speaking French, and that's actually not true. Yeah, I mean, other parts of France, I'm sure, but like Paris, a lot of people speak English. Yeah. Do you have a specific place you stay every time you go? Um, no, I, ha- I get Airbnbs. This time, a, a close friend of mine he owns an apartment and um, rented it to me for the uh, time I was there. So it was great. It's nice. Better, better than Airbnb. Cool. Yeah. Where was your previous European visit? Um, Barcelona, well, parts of uh, Madrid, Berlin, and I think that's it for like continental Europe. Okay. Oh, no, no, Croatia. Croatia. Uh, yeah, I went with uh, Logan yeah. last year. Oh, yeah. Or last two summers ago. Logan was, Stevens. Logan Stevens, yeah. Lovely, amazing. lovely. Yeah. Cool. Do you London. do you always film when you when you travel to a new destination? Do you try to find somebody to film a scene with? Yeah, if I'm traveling, um, yeah, because it's like you get what you get work out of it too. Yeah, it's not just for pleasure. I mean, and you get I, horny when you're traveling. Well, yeah. yes, but but I feel like I feel like, and you know, you can tell us this about too. Obviously, uh-huh. we're going to get into just your experience being an adult content creator and everything sure. like that. But you know, for some people. Um, filming a scene is work first yeah. and foremost. Are you of that li- of that mind, or or do you think that it can be fun as well? 
Um, it has to be fun as well. For okay, me. Gotcha. I'm not one of those people who can. I did it with studio porn where you just you're a robot. Yeah. Um, and it can't not to say some studio scenes can't be fun, but it is very robotic. Yes. And I can't bring that into my fan content. Like I have to be having fun into the person. Like it has to go both ways. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. With my scene partner. <laughs> awesome. I feel like sometimes with studio porn, they're like, um, <laughs> like I, I breed birds and pigeons and stuff. And like, if there's a certain male and female I want to put together to produce certain young, like I'll, I'll just pair them up and they pair up. He studio, loves, he loves studio breeding. Porn. <laughs> yeah, I love breeding in general. Breeding, just, but studio yeah. porn, they just kind of like take two guys they think look hot together and put them together. And not, you don't necessarily have chemistry. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you, I, I feel like a lot of times when I've worked with studios, they will, they'll reach out to me and like give me a picture or, or be like, do you know this person? Would you like to, did you, have you experienced that too, Cole? Like do, will, will people in studios try and ask you first if this is something you're at all interested yeah, in Yeah, when doing? I was exclusive, they would, you know, we'd talk about it. Like either I'd be shooting something and like I'd be talking with Tony or Steve about like who else I wanted to hmm. do yeah. stuff with. But yeah, sometimes I would just get a, a like random a, the the email for yeah. the booking just like and you're booked with like, this person you're booked with this person I'm like uh, yeah next door is like that too like, okay I'm I was and it changed like three times before oh wow I'm like I don't even know who I'm shooting with tomorrow <laughs> but did you find that in the beginning of your career before you had like a name they would just put you with whoever or like later on you could make your own decisions or you had more say in who you were well I only did with. one studio scene uh, before. I signed oh, with Falcon. Okay. So I did one and I didn't know either one of those guys. It was Killian Knox and Chad Lucas or Chad Ham mm, Homo with a hammer. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Don't say his name. Uh, <laughs> what is your experience? You're saying that for you, it was like, it was before you became the Chirac. Yeah. In the beginning before handle. you had, uh, before I felt like I had a little bit more leverage Yeah, as time went on, not leverage, but like I had a little bit more say in like who I was going to shoot with and what we were going to do in the scene. Hmm. There's some scenes where they're like, this is what it is and you either take it or leave it. And there's some produ like uh, directors who will work with you on that. And then, but I, but I did realize like uh, as time went on, I had a little bit more say in like who I was able to shoot with and yeah. what hmm. we were going to do. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, let's get back into, let's go back a little bit. Okay. Let's go, go let's, let's go. We're going to go to <laughs> okay. the origins of Chirac. Oh God. Um, tell us where you were born and where you grew up. I was born in LA. Okay. Born and raised. Um, you both are. Yep. Yep. Oh. I, I knew of uh, you, uh -huh. Adam. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I knew of Adam when I was 17. Like we were kind of, you were more East side. I was more West side. Like yeah. West Hollywood. Right. You were more like Silver Lake area and still is and still is it's well you know <laughs> <laughs> well because i was culver city and you were like where were you i, I mean i grew up in Psycho. montebello i yeah but okay. i i eventually i i was bopping around i was living in like i mean what is our age difference i actually don't know we're, i just turned thir well not just i'm 39 30 okay yeah. oh so you couldn't have been like that long ago i i didn't really come out until i was like 21 okay um and then i was kind of bopping around west hollywood in 22 23 i became a silver lake gay in like in at like 25 i feel okay. like that's when i kind of started um or how old, how old i'm you? 42 you're 42 oh, yeah so we're very close yeah we're close okay. three years yeah um but uh yeah i remember when you used to go go dance i remember being at parties like dilf oh, God. like years ago and he was go-go, like, you were go-go dancing. Me or him? You. Me? Uh, yeah, I, I started go-go dancing actually at, um, uh, who, where was it? Daddy Issues. Daddy Issues, that's yeah. it, not Dilf. But even, that was like even years after you and I first met. Yeah, yeah, years right? after we first met. Yeah, because we, sure. I, I don't remember exactly how you fell into my life, but you were just such an enigma. It wasn't until much later that I think we both realized that we were both kind of intimidated by each other. Yes. Um, oh, when we met up with Chody, we, we did, we that did photo this. Shoot. We did this photo shoot with Chody. We oh actually have God. an example. We uh, this is <laughs> <laughs> so this is taken oh from God. a photo shoot we did in 2010. My friend, my good friend Dean Littner, turned it into this wild things poster. Oh my God! You guys and look like babies. We're, we we're we're babies there, we and babies and there. you know the the funny thing is you can't tell in this picture, but we both really really just want to touch each other just in that fun. pool well we did after this we did yes that was the i think that was the first and only time that we, we ever hooked up 
but um yeah it's yeah and uh, uh, just hooked out you guys haven't filmed uh, we we have so so what happened was we hooked up during that shoot we then years later filmed for your first ever raging stallion scene yeah well you got me that scene kind of i guess i did well i yeah. well, i thought i thought you got the scene but you told them you didn't want to film unless i was your scene partner because you would have been more comfortable i think maybe that are you sure no i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's what he likes to think it was Good great ass. i mean i i enjoyed it steve, steve cruz was our director yeah. we did some like construction site thing yeah. where we like you know they were doing something different where we actually had phones and we were like pretending we were doing like selfie videos mm -hmm. while we were being bad boys and on this construction mm -hmm. set um and this is like and before then this was content site it was around the time it all started uh, it was like 2018 yeah. okay i yeah. think that's why they were they were like oh that's we're why they were throwing they were like we're gonna play with stuff. this idea of only fans you know this was i want to say this was like 2018 I think when 2018. we did that scene yeah but then we just filmed uh a content site fans, yeah, yeah content. We, our first one it was nice yeah it was really nice. <laughs> it was very nice <laughs> was. um but if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. uh you used to do porn like you did it a long time ago kind of around the time that shoot right is this correct that you did didn't you do it and then take a long oh break oh my god I did. yeah okay. i saw like a like a bait bus or Shut something up. yeah oh that was right before <laughs> our scene was raging stallion yeah. didn't you do uh, like two scenes before we did our scene. I, so, you, am I am I not correct that you you actually did scenes like around the time that we took that photo with Teodi? Earlier than that, I, w I had. Yeah, tell us about that. I tell us. Turned eighteen. You don't have footage of that, do you? <laughs> roll the clip. Roll the clip. No, just kidding. No, no, bait no. Bus? <laughs> no, it wasn't bait bus. Oh, okay. Wait, um, so you were eighteen and no, you I first just did porn? Turned eighteen. Okay. And yeah, I uh, was already doing sex work around LA. Okay. Um, I had signed with a uh, escort agency that I mean I don't think he's still around, but it was okay. in West Hollywood, and they had a website and basically had our pictures up, and guys would contact him and he would arrange it. So I, I didn't really have to do anything at that point. I just had to show up and then get paid. How much and did he take? He took thirty percent. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, it was kind of like OnlyFans, just I yeah. mean ten percent more. <laughs> How yeah. was that experience? I've never heard of anything like that. I mean, it's like an old school escort agency. Wow. Like instead of, but now everybody's on rent men yeah. and you know, I was a kid. I didn't really know how to do that. <laughs> were you, so. I mean, so here, and here's a, we all perceive ourselves very differently as uh -huh. we're growing up. I mean, like when I first met you, you were hot shit then I mean, to you, me. You are, still are. I mean, you uh, are, like yeah. you were always really, really fit. Have you uh -huh. always had that? Because like, ain't nobody paying me to be part of escorting services when I was 18. You know what I mean? I was a big <laughs> dork in yeah. my memory. Like, were you always like a very fit person? Um, no. Okay. I was, I was very overweight as a kid. Okay. Um, and then around 14, 15, I started to get into fitness and mm. my it's pretty mom, young. Yeah. Well, my mom is, and was at that time, my dad was kind of like a amateur bodybuilder at that time as well. So they used to go to gold's gym in Venice and me as like a little kid used to just sit in like the play area. And wait for them. So stare at all the muscle guys. Stare at all the muscle guys. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, like, Are we discovering your root? <laughs> Make an excuse to like go to the bathroom. <laughs> wow. So um, so I was just surrounded with it and like healthy eating and stuff like that. So yeah, 14, 15, 16. 16, I was like already, I had lost the weight and I had already gotten muscle and yeah. And then how did you land? Well, I mean, I guess we could still continue. So you grew up in an Iranian family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. In LA. In LA. Um, parents from Iran? Both from Iran. Both from Iran. One's Jewish, one's Muslim. Okay, all right. I'm half and half. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. How was that? Um, it was interesting. I mean, our household was pretty secular. We, I mean, we had a Christmas tree up until my, I was nine. Okay. Um, uh, didn't really celebrate many Jewish holidays unless I went to like my mom's family's house. Um, in our household, it was pretty secular. The only like religion that we had that I was really fully exposed to as a young child was, I guess, Islam because my grandmother lived with us and she was practicing. So I would, I would say maybe I grew up around that, but my mother and father themselves are pretty, they're non-religious. Okay. I didn't know you were half Jewish. Yeah. My mom's I'm Jewish. Jewish. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. My mom's Jewish. So, so basically I'm, but actually like my mom converted to Judaism, to Judaism before. So I guess it's, I'm half Jewish too. Oh, cool. <laughs> Technically. Nice. I guess. But I, but I like went to, Jewish summer camp and I was had a bar mitzvah and oh, cool. like 
I had a I had I have like a Jewish identity. I don't really yeah. practice now, but um, yeah. Was um, <laughs> coming out a, a difficult thing for you? What was that experience like? Coming to terms with your sexuality yourself, and then with your family. I think it was more with myself that I I had built it up to be this like really hard thing, but my mom obviously she already knew. Uh, <laughs> my aunt, my mother's sister, is a lesbian, okay, and so she obviously knew. And we had a, a very close, she had a very close gay cousin who was her first cousin. So they were always together and they all, like, it was, it was just like an unspoken thing. They, they were just basically waiting for me to come out. Mm. My dad, I think he knew, but he was just like putting it, um, trying to not believe it was real, but he was fine with it when I came out. They just wanted me to be healthy and happy yeah. is basically what it was. Right. You know, and at that time they were scared of. AIDS. AIDS. And I was petrified of AIDS. Of course. Yeah. The cousin, my mom, my, my cousin, the one I just talked about, the gay one, he died of AIDS when I was 15. Oh. So when I was 15, I knew like, oh, fuck, like that is where my life is headed because I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. So so then how at 18, only three huh. years later, did you get roped into something like an escorting service? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I left home at 16 and I went to go live with friends. Um, and I used to just kind of hang out in West Hollywood and it just kind of came about that way. Somebody was like, you're beautiful. You want to get paid? Yes, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's how it happens yeah. to a lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was, I was underage and I was dancing at Rage okay. with this guy and I was, I guess I was, I was drunk and I was, uh, maybe I was a little bit too sexual with him and he asked me if I'm a hooker. Like he said it like that. <laughs> and I got really offended and I like pushed him away and then I like went outside to smoke a cigarette. I'm like, like I am hmm, a hooker. Maybe I should be a <laughs> Wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It just kind of like fell into my lap. You remember um, the uh, Gold Coast? Yes. Yeah. So behind the Gold Coast was Vaseline Alley. Oh uh, yeah, it's still okay. there. It's still right? there, but it's not what it was. <laughs> it's not what it was. It's Is that where that name comes from? Yeah. Well, Valley? that's be it's because like before apps, people would have to like go. So it's a cruising spot. It's a cruising spot. That's yeah. what we did. That's what I did. Wow. I would take the bus from Culver City, the green bus to the metro, <laughs> wow. to Santa Monica and Doheny, because I didn't want to get off in front of the clubs, and I would walk, do the club thing, and then I'd walk to uh, Gold Coast. And I, I love my stories back like there. this. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. And it was between Santa Monica and Melrose, like on La Jolla. You would walk this beat yeah. all the way down to Melrose. There's an alley there too. You would do your thing. That's the first time I ever tried poppers was there. It was, <laughs> it was intense, yeah. Were there so, other like um, POC offerings or were you the only one with like melanin in your skin? I mean, I remember this era, like, like I felt very out of place a lot of times in yeah. West Hollywood. Well, we were... Um, we were no there weren't many iranians okay or middle eastern sure you know for that matter right but they couldn't really place me i was kind of racially ambiguous i yeah. feel like when yeah. i was younger yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh but when they would find out that oh, i'm persian i used to say i'm persian uh they would say oh really like you're so good looking for a persian guy uh-huh <laughs> i've gotten <laughs> sure that a lot that. i've gotten and that, at that a lot time i used to kind of think of that as like a compliment right but you know that's just the brain like the looking searching for that acceptance at that at that age yeah. i didn't know any better now you know it's fucked up now i know <laughs> yeah years later yeah. i'm like wow that was really fucked up because we got that a lot right so yeah but no there wasn't many there weren't many of us i think you were the only middle eastern other one and then there was like a small group of like four or five other persian guys right and my ex-boyfriend do you remember remember walid yes that was my ex right um he was like the only other arab like gay guy that i knew so i had such a crush on him yeah i still kind of do he's a, he's beautiful he's Whatever. such an amazing man <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're still in contact 20 years later yeah he's like my first ever boyfriend right yeah, <laughs> yeah. the last time i saw you guys together i took a picture of you hugging because i was like oh at, this is so cute summer's house yeah oh i think so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what so, uh, what was like a, a, your first so like growing up uh -huh. What kind of porn did you were you first introduced to? Like, what was your first stuff that uh, you got into? First stuff, okay. So we, there were VHS tapes back then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, there was a guy living in our in our back, well, in our garage, and he was Iranian, and I guess he had brought back Iranian porn tapes with him. So I watched Persian Iranian. Wow, really? VHS that existed? Tapes. It did. Gay? Yeah. No, straight. Oh, okay. He was gay, but. But they it, were yeah, straight. It was just straight. I don't think maybe 
now it exists. I've I've done it. <laughs> but, yeah. But no. Um, that was probably my first first. But when I was a kid, kid, there was a newsstand on National and Sepulveda, kind of close to where I used to live. And I used to go there, and they had a triple X section. And when the guy wasn't looking, I probably did this dozens of times but I would take one and out a uh, gay mag it was like honcho or something and I'd put it in, in my pants and then cover it with my shirt <laughs> like, you'd steal it I'd steal it oh my oh, god no. so in our crawl space under our, my mom's house uh, there was like a stack of like gay uh, magazines these stories you're telling, I, I swear to God, it makes it sound like you're a hundred years old. Like, I had a shoebox full of magazines. I wish like, I still of, had like, them. I know. I think I gave them to my brother a long time ago, and yeah. I don't know what he did with them. But it was like, uh, I mean, pages are sticky, and yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't have internet I know. until yeah. late, a little later. I know, I know. But there was also this like Barnes and <laughs> it wasn't Barnes and Nobles. I can't remember the name of the bookstore, but it was on Thirsty Promenade, and they had like a, a photography section. And I always knew if you go to the photography section, there would be naked men or women. And there was a my, uh, Maplethorpe book. Mm. Oh, my God. I would just steal pages from it. <laughs> so after a year. <laughs> just ruining the book. The entire just book was it. empty. It was just the hard oh cover. Oh, my God. Because oh, wow. all, those, all those pages were under my mattress. <laughs> so that was hilarious. the first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So these are kind of the things that, would you say they sort of like developed your aesthetic a little bit too? Like. Yeah, because you know, sure. Cole, and, Cole and I talk about this on on this podcast a lot, where we talk about the things we were exposed to in our teen years and how oh. they really inform our tastes yeah. and like what we like to look like, what we kind of look for in other men. Like I don't know, like what sex acts do you like to see in your porn? Oh, uh, the ones that I recreate in my in my in my no, fan like, content, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. Because uh, when I started making fan content, I was like. I, I want to make porn that I actually, that I would watch. Yeah, I feel the same and way. so basically, like, it was that. But what do I like to watch? Um, I, you know, honestly, like, I like when it's, like, an old Android phone and they're just like this in an alley or, like, a bathroom stall and getting it on. It, maybe it's a 30-second clip or maybe it's a three-minute clip. Like, mm. I like that kind of stuff. Like, do you like real, amateur? Amateur. Is that what real, we call it? Yeah. I see. That's what was your like POV stuff? POV, uh, yeah. yeah. If it looks real, like it's not like a staged setup thing, like I, I'll enjoy it. I like having a cameraman because then yeah. I can move around, man. I can just fuck. So yeah. Sometimes I like that too. <laughs> I've done it. I do. Yeah. But I, I tend to prefer one on one. But then it makes it hard when you've got like a stationary camera. And yeah, you have to I like know. move it here and there and it's like kind of annoying. Yeah. It's it's the bitch of making it certainly, but I've yeah. seen your stuff. You're really good at the POV with uh, not POV of the fly on the wall mm. look. Like I that's like kind that. of like a big thing that I think you offer in the world of adult content. Thank you. Um what was your first porn shoot like? Do you remember? Um yeah, it was uh in those days, I think I met Shishi LaRue days. at at uh Mickey's or something back then. And I really wanted to do porn. I don't know why. I was 18 and I was like... You always did? Yeah, I really wanted to do porn. I okay. think maybe like as a young gay person, like looking up to like these go-go dancers and sex workers and like drag queens. And I wanted to be a part of that lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and so porn just seemed like, I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> Actually, I used that money to build an aviary for my birds. <laughs> I love how it. All many bird, how many hand. birds do you have? I don't have any right now. I wish I did, uh -huh. but I had like I don't know, thirty-five parrots. Where'd they go? I sold them. Oh, when I moved to Thailand. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we did. How much does a parrot go for? <laughs> um, they were like three fifty each. Oh, yeah, it's not too bad. No. I do feel like we kind of steamrolled over earlier when you said you bred pigeons. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, pigeons. everyone who's I watching and listening, he did say that <laughs> he works with birds. Or I, did. I used to work. I don't have the time or the space right now to do it, but I would. So this but is when you were how old? You were 18 or 19 yeah. or when you did your first shoot to pay for an aviary? I was 18. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it uh, worked? Yeah, it worked. I got 800 bucks. Nice. Which is funny because 20 something years later, that's exactly the same amount they wanted to pay me. <laughs> 20 some, years later. Yeah. Some studios still want to pay. 800 bucks. And I took it. <laughs> <laughs> but it just it was it was mind-boggling like it, the, the the pay hasn't increased for like newcomers right um but that shoot was fun i had just turned like i said just turned 18 i was like a twink i had big curly hair um and i had only really bottomed once in mm -hmm. my life mm 
um, and that wasn't really a pleasurable experience. So when I got on set and they told me I was going to bottom, I freaked out. I was like, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck to do. So mm. it, I mean, it went as well as as it could have, <laughs> but it was fun. It was like they didn't tell you you were bottoming until you no, were on set. No, wow. And they put me with this other. Uh, Did they give Iranian you a bulb guy. and. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like a little douche thing. Yeah. Oh, like a, a fleet. And of course, there was like water stuck in me, and I'm like, uh, I don't know how to get that out. <laughs> 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 I remember hate that. I was uh, I was in Vegas, and I had a scene for Raging Stallion, and I not used to I wasn't used to douching as much. And um, Sky Knox was in the hotel, uh -huh. and I called him, and I'm like, Sky, I have, <laughs> I have the same please thing. help. <laughs> the bottom for, I think I was bottoming for Ricky Larkin and Wade Wolfgar. Oh, oh wow. wow. And they're both big and bigger. Yeah. Big at the same time. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I don't know what I'm doing. So I went to Sky and he like helped me. You did a three way where you bottomed for the two of them? For them, yeah. And then I made Steve let me fuck Wade because I was like, I can't like Yeah. <laughs> but they always wanted to put me as the bottom. Always. Yeah, well, our scene you you bottomed. Yeah. Um oh, really. Do you like what do you prefer? What do you prefer? In my real life? Or are you just verse like a hundred? Um top. Top. I'd say top verse, but usually top. Yeah. Do you do you bottom for your content? No. 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 It's just not why something not. I, um, I I save that for like my partner. Yeah. But if I I just don't really I don't want to fake it, and I don't truly enjoy it when it's like not somebody that I'm into. Mm -hmm. Um. So if I'm doing it for fan content, like I don't want it to be something fake. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can I I can get into someone topping me more if I'm not like I have trouble if I'm not really into a bottom that I am topping. Mm. Mm. If I'm filming. Okay. So you're the opposite. like that yeah, it's easier for me. At least I can like if they have a nice dick or something and it feels good, like I can yeah, focus on that. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> but you have a different like I mean physiologically you're very lucky that if you're getting fucked your dick is hard right yes. yeah I'm not like that yeah, yeah. even I'm with my partner know, for what is that we gotta ask Dr. Josh about Some that people. yeah we will we he's will. coming he's coming he's back coming. I think. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Josh Gonzalez oh I went to him yeah yeah, I got the peep. Yeah, he's going to PRP him. everybody's going to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did the shockwave recently. It's you been did? interesting. Did you like uh, it? It's interesting. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do a little social media moment about it. Okay, and cool. uh, and he, he was on our show last season. He's going to come back. Nice. Because he just has so much information yeah. about sexual health for men. And I should go back to him. I want to try the PRP thing again. He, I mean, yeah. Did you feel like it did anything for you? I think I needed more sessions. Yeah. Because I just did one. So okay. I don't know. I don't know really. Yeah, it's probably something you have to like I keep doing. To, yeah, right. and I also like take other things for dick uh, to get hard. So <laughs> yes. I don't know if it was the PRP or if it was the sure. Cialis yeah. or the Trimex. Like I don't know what it was. Right, 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 right. So, but anyway, the first sheet scene that I did there's one funny thing. Like we were all, I think there may be like six or seven of us all around the same age, in like this cabin in the woods in San Diego. So we were obviously not supposed to like fuck before our scenes because we oh. had to like save our loads. But that was like, it's not gonna you happen. can't put a bunch of horny like 18, 19 year old gay guys together and not like not expect us to fuck. So yeah, it was a very different time. It was a lot of fun. Right. But did yeah. you take a break for a long time? Yeah, I just didn't do, I didn't feel the need to like do another uh, porn scene. And also I think for my aesthetic, like there wasn't really a market yet. I was like this kind of like twinky, uh, Middle Eastern, ambiguously Middle Eastern looking guy. Yeah. And um, it was more geared towards like other people who looked a little differently than I did. Sure. <laughs> so, so yeah, there wasn't really a need to get back into it until when 2000, what, 17, 18? Right. Yeah. What, what did change that made you think, okay, I can get, I want to do this again? Um, you know, Teddy bear, mm -hmm. Teddy, Teddy bear. bear. Yeah. Yeah. He, I was escorting full time. Okay. Um, and we would see each other at the gym at, uh, that we went to. And sometimes I would like complain about how I didn't like escorting. <laughs> and he's like, well, you just do a scene. I'm like, no, I've done it. Like I was, I had a bad experience with it, whatever. Um, I, the honest thing is like, I just didn't really want to do it. 
But as time went on, he kept saying like, hey, I can get you a scene in it. So finally I was like, okay, I'll try it. And then I got kind of excited about it. And um, that's just kind of how I fell back into it. And then once that picked up and took off, I stopped escorting altogether. So what was your first scene when you got back into it? First scene was, uh, what's the one Paul Wagner does or did? Paul Wagner? I only know him to do Raging Stallion. Uh, he was just in uh, Reality over, Dudes. Overdrive. Um, Reality Kings or? Dudes, no? Dude. Kings? Reality Kings is straight, I think. Reality I Dudes? I've never even heard of this. Where it's like you pick up a straight guy on the street. <laughs> Uh, and then he, <laughs> straight in straight. quotes and then he ends up getting fucked by the end of the video of course so that was me so I did that <laughs> bro I don't do yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be like a landscape gardener which I was uh huh wow um, reality yeah reality cause he's like what are you doing art so, imitates life yes exactly yeah. so that was like my first um, and that went pretty well um, and then Shishi LaRue put me with Max Connor uh, for a noir male. Okay. And that was interesting. Oh, oh. I've been seeing him bottom lately. <laughs> yeah. I saw him post something recently <laughs> yeah. that, that he was going to do that. Good for cool. him. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's so, like, I don't know if people realize how small he is. He's tiny. Oh, I know. He's like super short. He's so he's like cute. Five, he's like eight? He, five, seven, no, no. He's, he's like, like five, five, five. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, um, I'm, I guess I'm always lying down when... <laughs> but no shade. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> which doesn't really matter. Well, he, he's like... he's He's got like a third leg. It's like... Yeah, he's, huge he's, dick. Uh, yeah. He's huge. He's such... And when you meet him, he's like the sweetest yeah. person. Like, I was in physical pain uh, in that shoot because it's quite big. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was a condom scene on top of that. So, oh. like, getting fucked with a big dick with a condom Ugh. on it is like the worst feeling worst. for me. Yeah. Um, but he was always like, are you okay? Are you like... I'm like, yeah, I just my <laughs> constantly st- checking in. It was so cute and so That's sweet. Very sweet. My raging stallion scene with him was the shortest I've ever, the shortest day it's ever taken. Oh yeah, why is oh, that? Because wow. we just did it right. So. Oh, <laughs> don't you love when that happens? It was like, it was like four hours. <laughs> okay. like, Amazing, start to finish, <laughs> which is rare for raging. Stallion. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I love when that happens. Done. Um. Well, so. You were saying that it, the shoot was interesting. What, what, he was, so, cause it sounds like he was good. Which one? The one with uh, Max Connor from Noir Mail. Oh, yeah. What was the aspect of it that made it not so great? Or did, was there? Um, Usually when someone says interesting with a pause, I'm always like, there's more of a story to this that makes it, <laughs> made it a difficult day. I mean, there's like, I mean, there's things I don't know if I can talk about. Okay, I'm sure. actually still friends with some of the people. Gotcha. But it was just interesting. Gotcha. Yeah. Sometimes porn is hard, everybody. Yeah. As you've it, heard. It is hard. A number of times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to, I mean, considering that we're talking about, like, just the idea of top and bottom and porn mm-hmm. and stuff, would you say that you are or have been developing a persona in the world of adult content? And do you even believe in that in general? Uh, a persona like it's a, is it something you kind of like I want to appear this way uh, to on social media I think we all kind of do that a little I don't know I don't know I that think, I do I, I feel like I kind of do I feel like I kind of do like whatever I feel like it. Yeah. I, I, I don't I feel like who was talking about this I think Rocky was talking about this in our last episode that he was like my brand is me mm-hmm. which I really like relate to because I feel like I kind of just do whatever I feel like mm-hmm. I also realize that if sometimes that means you don't go very far mm-hmm. because people kind of like to see you as like this is what you do and I would say generally in the last few years you've kind of really picked up as like twink destroyer top that was from the start though was it <laughs> when I yeah when I made my OnlyFans, because I, I only shot with people that I that I um, that you could lift up and throw around, that I knew I would have fun <laughs> like fucking. Is that so? That's a thing that you're really into. Yeah. Okay. It's not just like a thing. Gotcha. Like, you I like know. being like the hyper like alpha. Not so much. It doesn't even have to be the alpha thing. Like I just uh, I like the size difference. Mm. It's fun to like be able to physically lift somebody up if they want to be lifted up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot of people see that 
I'm rough in my videos, but that's just like I'll, I'll take the clip from the maybe 45 minute video post that on Twitter and that's what people see is like me smacking somebody or choking somebody but they don't see the 40 minutes of like kissing and foreplay what a gentle sweetheart you are <laughs> you've you've had sex with, you've we've shot yeah you know and so you know how I am in real life yeah you're a very gentle yeah. gentle human yeah, you can throw um, me around but like yeah the thing is <laughs> yeah. but it's in, it's interesting um, that you choose those parts to put on your Twitter because mm-hmm. like that's kind of that well, that's means that's a clickbait Okay, see, now we're getting into how the, host- the sausage gets made yeah, a little bit. That's yeah, clickbait. clickbait is how the, the sausage gets stuffed. But you can't, I, I don't, I. <laughs> it's the thing. Like, I like whoever you just mentioned said, like, my brand is me. Like, my yeah. brand is, I feel like my brand is me. Sure. And I don't hide that, especially even on Instagram, too. Like, there's no, that's why, even with the name Shirak, yeah. is my name, Sharuk. Yeah. I just made it Shirak. Right. Because I couldn't. With the 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 Shishi Leru Noir Mail one, I I was under a name Luca Miklos, right. And halfway right before they released the scene, I'm like, I can't be Luca Miklos. Yeah, Shishi, I'm sorry. Like my name's Shirak. She's like, you can't do that. Like the, <laughs> it's it's done. Like and you're like, watch it. me. I'm like, sorry, it's, I, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, because I just couldn't be this other person. How, so, so how many scenes were you Luke I feel like that was, I remember this just oh one. it was just the yeah, one just the one yeah because we talked about this when yeah. it first happened I was like I wanted to be Chirac and then I, I got feedback from other people in my life who were like no you should be a fake name something yeah something else and like something that is more marketable uh, easier to say for, so people will remember I'm like okay whatever so this is what we came up with yeah look at me close but at the end of the day I couldn't be somebody else right so I don't know when I when you say like is there is like a persona that I'm trying to portray I guess somewhat but at the end of the day it's really me yeah cool well we like you yeah we like so. you I mean I <laughs> shit I'm sure a lot of people listening have definitely jacked off to your yeah. content before I certainly have <laughs> um, I do I want I almost was gonna like put aside these clips from our scene together though like there were a uh-huh. couple times where you like specifically grabbed my hand and put it back on your butt uh huh. And I was like, I'm going to get him to bottom on camera one day. God <laughs> well, damn it. our scene was for Raging Stallion. I bought him for you. I know. I mean, like more recent. Oh, I'm, ta- yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about. He wants it now. I want yeah. it now. You want it now. Okay. Give up the butt. We'll try. Give up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> I was thinking maybe doing a, like a flip scene or something. Yeah. But again, I want it to be something that I'm actually going to have fun with. Sure. I don't want to just do it for the. Well, let me ask you this also, and and I know that this is where like it kind of gets into the business side of things. Uh-huh. Um, you have a huge following, uh-huh. um, and I'm I'm guessing that sometimes marketing comes into play for stuff like this, right? Mm. So, like, wouldn't would you think, okay, if I'm gonna do a flipping scene, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna do a scene that I can absolutely sell. You and Francois, you yeah. and you know what I mean. Yeah. Is that something that comes into play when you think about these things sometimes? Yeah, for sure. I think we spoke about that before I left for Paris. Me and Francois. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> I was just—I just know that you know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that we talked. We so we talked about that. That was something that I wanted to do, but it just didn't work out when, when I was in Paris. I see. This, this time. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Could be something. Could be something. But um, as far as like studio work comes into play like i was pigeonholed into that role because of my maybe like physical shortcomings early on in my career and it was really hard to pivot from that and get out of that your physical sh- you have physical shortcomings <laughs> are you saying because you don't have a nine inch dick according to two directors yes they couldn't market me as a top you're not small though. how big is your dick it's like seven inches according to Je- flesh jack <laughs> i've seen it it's a decent it's a nice dick it's not i've seen it i've seen it too but i didn't have a ruler but but it's but it's funny that we sometimes get into like these weird um i mean like i i don't think you're like much we're i would say similarly sized you might even be a little fatter but they i got hired as a top a lot i do um i verbatim they said they could not market me as a top for raging stallion that's what? Crazy, right? yeah. That's insane to me. That's crazy. So I was like, okay, but I really wanted to work. So I was like, I, I did everything that came my way. Wow. Did you shoot a lot with them? A lot, yeah. Okay. Were you and, exclusive? No, they yeah. never offered me an uh, exclusive. Wow. I would have too bad it. about your tiny dick. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, then Cocky Boys picked me up as an exclusive. Oh yeah. Did they really? Did yeah. 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 What was that like? 
filming uh, with them? It was it was nice because, well, for one thing, there's literally just one person filming. It's uh, just Adrian. Yes, right. Sometimes maybe there might be somebody. That's how for, like Mark McNamara is. Too. It really is just him on cam on set. Yeah, it was oh. fantastic, and Adrian's super cool. Maybe I think maybe one time there was somebody who was adjusting the lights, but that was it. Um, and what was cool about that is like we watch your. I've seen your content. He's, he said I've seen your content, and I basically want to bring what you do with your personal content into these scenes for Cocky Boys. And I was like, amazing. Hmm. Like that's cool. That's great. So basically, I told him like, if you want that, just let me do my thing and follow me with the camera, and that's it. And it was it worked. Nice. Destroying twinks. That was for fun. Cocky Boys. I mean, there, have you ever worked, <laughs> Cole? Have you ever worked with Cocky Boys? No. Um, it it is very interesting what what Adrian or R J Sebastian does because mm-hmm. there the fact that he he'll set up one stationary camera and it will have one in his in you know with him and just because it's only him on set tell me if you Sharak if you think this is what he does as well uh-huh. there is a bit of a sexual charge <laughs> with him being the one well because you know what I he's hot he's, he's handsome. really handsome <laughs> super and, handsome. and like the having him direct the uh-huh. scene when it's just him, there is, I get turned on by it a little bit. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't a, know he's who a very this handsome is. guy. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you a picture. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a very handsome guy and gorgeous. he's super sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It was fun. It was a great experience. Yeah. I love the like sexual charge. 2020. So, um, it wasn't always like easy to get to New York to shoot. Mm. It's like COVID was still a thing and right. We're still running rampant. So. Right. But yeah, it was fun. Um, you had some questions. I like. Yeah. Uh, um, I wanted to ask, um, like, what experiences have you had dating while you are in this industry? Oh. Like, <laughs> is it, like, do you date often, or have you had many? You've been in it in a while, so I mm-hmm. figure you must have had some like long term relationships in that time. Um, I. It's not easy. It's not easy. No. It's really not easy. I don't know any... Do you know anybody who is in like a healthy relationship? Who does does what we do? I don't. I'm sure it exists. I'm sure it does. Yeah. But I don't really know. There's a couple that I know, like maybe two. That both do it? That one of them both does it. The other one, one of them does it. Um, And they've been... They're like married now. So... I don't know. I I have a really hard time with it. It's like as soon as I start falling in love with somebody, which happens, um, I kind of don't want to film anymore. Like I don't want to fuck uh. other people. And then my work starts to suffer and then I get, I don't know, it's like this. Like See, that's the, a, that's the a the different opposite. problem. <laughs> yeah. The opposite. It's like if I like start seeing someone, uh-huh. I stop wanting to have sex with them (laughs) oh really very quickly and then i just use work to be like well that happens to me too so it's (laughs) like uh, yeah why is that and intimacy it's an intimacy issue i have that i'm in therapy yeah for it (laughs) (laughs) good for you it's a laugh but like i'm kind of going through it now so it's like Hmm. it's tough it's tough Going we can, through, we can practice intimacy together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend you both do that with each other. Just, it's in the work. Well, it's do like, the work. We give so much of ourselves, our sexual energy to everybody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how active you guys are active on social media too. So it's like, especially Twitter, it's like constant um, sexualization and and having to put yourself out there in that way, which is part of the job. Like we signed up for it. But what I didn't realize is that how much it would alter my like private sex life mm. or like my private relationship with intimacy or other guys. Yeah, I try. I definitely felt I I like went into it with a point to like still have a good amount of recreational sex uh-huh. um, and not just like not every time I was having sex was monetized or yeah. you know marketed yeah. is it so, still like that um it that it became less important for me i guess <laughs> i just was like i think i decided i was like i'm just i just shouldn't really date anyone while while i'm still in this yeah mm. and like i'm not that it's like off limits but i'm like i just like it doesn't it doesn't it's not fun 
I feel yeah. bad. I feel like I'm neglecting them mm -hmm. all the time. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. what if you're it's in weird. it for a lot longer? Uh, um, I mean, I guess not that I'm else. saying everyone should be dating. Like I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I date, I, I mean like I go on dates and stuff, mm -hmm. but that's kind of like, I like it. I like sex and then leave or <laughs> <laughs> it's an intimacy like, thing. Yeah. I get it. I, I started to feel like even with recreational sex, which is really fucked up. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, fuck, this would be so hot on camera. Mm. Or like, I don't want to waste this load uh, in yeah. this guy when I could be making X amount of dollars from it, which is a really fucked up way of thinking. It's common in, in this industry. It though. is. It's super there common. There are a lot of guys. Me, I'm not saying it's fucked up for everybody. But for me, it, it really fucked with my head. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, sometimes I'll just like, not even like I deleted the apps when I was, when I'm in a relationship and everything. So, but when I'm single, I don't even like really go on the apps. It'll be like, I've been cruised and that was fun. Or like I'll hire a sex worker and mm. just like cut the middleman out. And just do, you, do you do that sometimes? <laughs> yeah, of course. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I'll I mean, I'm somebody. Jesus, can you imagine getting that call? <laughs> like Chirac is hiring you for for a session. <laughs> They're like, wait, <laughs> jackpot, you bitch! I've never done it in the states. I've only done it in Europe. Uh, oh, okay, got it. You know, because it's yeah, it's fun. Yeah, amazing, it's easy. You, you know what you're getting, like and right? You just yeah, and your... you can tell them when, when to leave. Exactly. Here's your money. Thank you. <laughs> Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci bye bye. <laughs> um, what is in the immediate future, or even the distant future, for Chirac? Um, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I was oh. trying to figure that out. Gotcha. I thought I had it figured out uh, a year ago, and everything just went like. Oh yeah. Yeah, kind of. Okay. What did so, you think you were gonna be mm -hmm. doing? Um, I mean, I was gonna continue doing what I'm doing, um, but kind of channel my energy and resources into other avenues and move from LA. Um, oh. And I don't know. Uh, Do you were, still want to move? Yes, yes and no. Yeah, I do still want to move. I have a love-hate relationship with LA. Do you want to move to Europe? I wanted to move to Europe. Oh, yeah. yeah. So mm. I don't know if you can relate. Like being born and raised here, it's like I love it because it's my home, but I also hate it sometimes. And I yes, I keep trying to get away from it, but it keeps pulling me back. <laughs> I, I feel like I I make this joke all the time that like nobody knows its shortcomings more than I do, mm -hmm. but I also love it so much. Yeah, and nobody loves it more more than I do. And if people talk shit about it, I'll defend it. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just like fuck. I'm over it. I'm ready to go. Yeah. So I don't know. I was yeah. uh yeah. I can't say for sure. Well, you've built something really amazing and you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. It's a, you have a huge following and I hope it's making you lots of money and bringing you lots of joy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, how can people find you? We see uh, your exes at the Chirac. Yes. Um, is it the same for your Instagram? X, formerly known as Twitter. Yes, right. I hate <laughs> saying X, but I have yeah. to. I don't know. Um, yeah, the, I mean, I have two. I have one that's like, I don't know. Yeah, the Chirac on, on Instagram, too. Okay. It's Perfect. not that important to me. X is more important. X is more important. Yeah, if you want more political... Business tool. Geopolitical, like, like stuff, then go to Instagram. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cole, do you have any more questions? I don't think so. This was nice. Yeah. I, like, I was a little nervous for some reason. We were both like, I don't know what, it, I don't know what it's going to be like. <laughs> you like, mean having Chirac on? You were nervous? Yeah, I was nervous. Yeah? Yeah. Well, How'd, we you nervous? How'd we do? How'd you do? How'd we do? I mean, great. It just felt like a conversation. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How did I do? You did great. You did great. Thanks for thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Sorry for asking. No, uh, right. And um, yeah, this will be out in March. And thank you so much for being with us. We love you. And thank you all so much for listening and for watching. I'm Adam Ramsey. I'm Cole Connor. And this has been Sorry, Sorry for, for Asking. asking. This has been Sorry for Asking. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, stay, stay sexy. sexy. <laughs>